Okay, so time to work on the large fore deck. It comes in two pieces. Could be done in one, they say, but then the shipping crate would be much bigger. So we're going to be butt joining, gluing these together and using some nails. So I'm just going to make a little scribe mark down the edge here. So all my nail holes are the same distance from the edge. Now it's set at three quarters of an inch. So because all of the nail holes will be visible on the top side, we want them nice and evenly spaced. First one will be three quarters from the end. With each successive nail hole, four and a half. And I'm going to do the same on the cleat that will be nailed down by making marks evenly spaced about five inches apart. And on the drill press I'm just going to drill holes on all my marks so that my finishing nails will cleanly and easily go through the wood and not be nailed into it. And then I'll preset my finishing nails and all my little three-quarter by three-quarter pads by hammering them through with a hole in the piece of wood. So I'm just taking the little pads with the nails in them, putting them onto the marks, and tacking down one half of the forward seat assembly to the table. Now with the one half tacked down, we've got the lineup marks here. Cut into the panels. Just going to line up, making sure that ends are flush and we're pushing tightly against the first side and tack down the second side. I'm not driving the nails all the way in, just enough to hold it in place so that I can remove it and mask them a mask off the table. And now we're going to nail down the cleat. Uh, it sits flush with the very forward edge of the seat panel and we've already drilled those holes in there so we can slide them right through and just tap them down lining up the edge of the cleat nicely with the edge of the panel. Now that it's all tacked down, I'm going to draw up on the table exactly where it's sitting. We're going to put it back in the same position. two pieces together and glue down the cleat at the same time, but not to the table. 
and a couple of simple layers of clear packing tape prevents any squeeze out when gluing the two halves together from adhering the panels to the table. Prime the edges of these pieces of plywood that will butt together. I could try and brush it on here, but it's likely that epoxy will run everywhere. So just by using a short, small piece of roller, and just prime these edges enough to let the edge of the plywood soak in what it can. So now I've just added a bit of adhesive fillers, make a nice thick paste, it's not going to drip. I am going to roll this out, but what I'm going to do is just put a bit of dabs onto here, just, just so I can spread it around. It's not worth filling up a syringe or a caulking tube for this small job. I'm just going to put it back same position we had it in using my pencil marks. Let me get under there. And I can see, feel that it kind of finds the same holes in the work table. find the same hole. Now I'm just priming the edges where the cleat will go so I'm going to roll on a bit of unthickened epoxy and then add the thickened epoxy to the cleat itself and again when we put it back down in place it should find its location from all the holes that we put in there the first time. Okay, with that smeared in epoxy, we're going to put it back where it was. Starting off at the bow again. Oops. So they should find the original hole. This time we're going to really hammer it down. So I came up a bit short on epoxy. I'm not going to mix up because I know I'm going to be able to recover quite a bit of it from the squeeze out here. So we're just going to chisel, stick the excess off. And then the last thing to do is to just to make sure that these two are down flush to each other, no ridges between. So here I'm just removing the little blocks holding this Cleat down. 
These nails aren't in very far, so they're going to easily come out. And just to make sure we don't uh, carry on any further with this actually glued to the table, we're just going to slowly lift it up and pry it away from the table. And we're looking pretty good. I was worried about squeeze out. It looks like we had a bit of squeeze out underneath here, but it actually tore the plywood away from the table versus the plywood away, veneers away from the uh, the deck itself, the marine ply. So we're good. Okay, we've got a couple of uh, three quarter by three quarter brackets to go across, and they're marked on the uh, underside of the panels exactly where they go, and they're just kind of cut over length. So we are going to roughly have these cut to fit in. And with these two pieces fitting, I'm just going to take my laminate trimmer and round over some edges and then uh, give them a light sanding before installing them inside. So I've just temporarily nailed down those two cross bracings and now we are going to be running wider, thinner pieces along this edge here and just need to be roughly fit out and cut. So there are the marks on here to line up this piece, but most importantly is flush with this outer edge here. With all five of these pieces uh, dry fitted, just going to make some marks so I can put them nowhere to put them back. The nails should find their uh, original holes. But uh, it's nice to just uh, have these extra lines so that you know the right piece is going in the right place. I've cut a couple of strips of four ounce fiberglass that will uh, cross the middle seam. And now I am just uh, priming the areas where all of the pieces will get glued down. So I'm priming the surfaces, then I'm going to prime the pieces of wood. With all the bare wood primed, it's time to thicken up the epoxy and add uh, my thick paste to all of the surfaces. And then we're able to just put everything back where it originally was. The nails will find those holes and we'll tack everything down and let it harden up. With all the bracing tacked down, I can now just saturate my strip of glass down the center line with a brush, soaking it well, letting it soak in and cleaning off any excess. So next up is to add the reinforcing doubler to the back side of the hash lid. It says it should be about 77 eighths of an inch from either edge. So I've just scribed a few lines using my square and just checking to see that that is Pretty accurate as far as where we want it to go. So that's where it needs to be. It'll be helped to just kind of clamp it down for the moment. The bench. So it's just not going to move around on me. I'm going to drive some nails in in various places so that we can relocate it with a thickened epoxy. Sure, I want to drive them right through. I don't need holes on the front side, but this will help too. 
top it off. Like so. And we'll add a little epoxy. Nail it down, clamp it down. So we're just going to place it back and the finishing nails will find the holes in the panel itself, relocate it and then we'll just tack it down. We got a good amount of squeeze out there. Okay, we're just getting ready now to fiberglass the top surface of the forward seat assembly. But before that, just need some edges that need to be cleaned up. As you recall, these little cleats here were hanging out the end to form a basically a square cross. So I've just cut the corners off with a with a basic pull saw and uh, block sanded it down nice and smooth so that the cleats are equal and smooth to this to the uh, original plywood uh, shape. I'm then going to round over the top edge because as you sit on here then uh, you're going to be a little hard on the back side of your legs if this is a, a very sharp edge. So we're just going to take the uh, little round over bit and the laminate trimmer and do that. give this a light sanding with the orbital sander. I've filled a few holes here so that we don't get small bubbles forming under the glass as it off gases. <laughs> this full panel and whenever there's an overlap of glass or a butt join of glass it just means that you got to let that cure you got to sand it smooth and add more epoxy so in the interest of time and money I just cut myself a larger piece from a roll that I have and uh, laid it out in one piece so now we can just smooth it out nicely in preparation for the epoxy. And I like to just use big brush. So all I ever use it for is to smooth out glass. Hands are rough, hands are dirty. So uh, this way I'm able to iron out the little puckers and wrinkles here without catching it with my, my skin or my hands. So we got one here when there's a big one I like to just push it because if you try to iron out a big one you can kink the glass a little bit and then it's very difficult to so now that it's smooth I'll push a little harder both directions smoothing it all out getting all the things out so from the off cuts in the corner pieces here, I've just uh, taken another off cut here, just big enough to cover the hatch lid. And I've just got it sitting on a paint can, so it's above the table, and we're all set to go. 
On this panel i have opting to just pour the epoxy on and spread it around with my uh, putty spreader. Uh, it's pretty simple to do. Don't need a roller for this process. Goes pretty fast. And I'm easily able to just move the puddle around to the edges and saturate the whole panel. With the panels fully saturated and the glass nice and clear, I'm just going to go back and remove any excess epoxy with my, with my spreader. Just a gentle pull and then dispose of the excess in the cup. It's important that the glass be pushed down onto the wood as this is a much stronger structure than if glass is floating in puddles of epoxy. Okay, so two coats of epoxy on the top side of the forward seat assembly. So I've just flipped it over, trimmed all the fiberglass to the edges, and then block sanded and rounded over the end here. Just going to take a brush now and a roller, and we'll do a couple of seal coats on the underside of the seat assembly. So I'm going to start with just brushing on the edges everywhere. Don't suppose we have to be too tidy. No one's ever going to see underneath here, but you don't want sharp edges because people may very well stick gear in dry bags in the hatch area here and uh, would be not very good if all the dry bags were getting torn on sharp bits of epoxy or a sliver of wood. So sanded all of the cleats here, rounded over all the edges so there's nothing sharp. The outer edge here probably will need a little bit of trimming for a good tight fit so I'm not going to bother with epoxy coating the outside edge of the cleat. Since we have epoxy mixed up here, we'll coat the underside of the hatch cover as well, which everything needs at least two coats of epoxy to be waterproof. Just going to put some epoxy in here so I can just hit it with a roller.
So we're down to the last few pieces in assembling the foredeck. I have the combing, the hatch lid all covered in a couple of coats of epoxy and uh, sanded, scuff sanded smooth for a good bond so that the uh, combing will fit between the bit of bracing. Now I did need to take a block plane and take a few shavings off the edges here due to buildup of epoxy. But I think we've got a nice tight, pretty tight fit to go into there. Just be able to drop down. It's not going to fall out when we have to flip it over, but I didn't want it too loose and I didn't want it too tight because if I doing a test fitting and, and jammed it into there, I was worried about having to get it out without doing some tear out. Okay, I've mixed up my epoxy with adhesive blend of silica. We're just going to brush it all, all the surfaces here need to stay away from the actual gasket slot there. Don't really want it squeezing into there. But we can brush on. I mean it's a pretty flat surface to flat surface. It shouldn't need that much epoxy in there for a bond. But I don't want any gaps where water will migrate through. Set it down in place. There are marks on the panels themselves to line this up. You can shift it from side to side so that it's even. And I've got my clamps already kind of set to depth here. We don't need too much clamping pressure. I don't want to dent any wood. So for me to reach these uh, clamps underneath, I've just actually got this sitting on a couple of 2x4s on edge. So that I've got some room to reach in and underneath if I need to. So we're just going to double check that it's on center. Looks to be right on the lines. Now with the blocks, should be able to turn it over and just Double the blocks, the clamps are not hitting the table. So just kind of double checking the edge there, looks fairly even all the way around. We can add a few more clamps here. So I flipped all the clamps over so they're facing upright. That allows me to get into the uh, inside corner there and clean out any squeeze out of epoxy. Otherwise the hatch lid itself is not going to fit in there nicely. Take a small chisel stick and get in that tight corner and get any epoxy out of there. And once this is all cured, the forward seat assembly is ready for install. Now the options are to install it before cutting the boat in half or after. And I think we're going to wait till after the boat is cut in half before installing it. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to hit subscribe and click the bell button to stay tuned.